Namaste to everyone. Namaste Gopal Ramayya. Welcome to the morning session. Namaste Bhaiya. So welcome everyone in this morning session of exercise 2. So good morning to all of you. So let me brief about step 1 and 2 of exercise 2. Then we can share our observations and we can learn together. So in this exercise 2, we are trying to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body by the self. In exercise 1, we observe the self by the self. So when we are doing this exercise 2, it means exercise 1 is in the background of it. So with exercise 1, we are doing this exercise 2. So in exercise 1, we observed our self-consciousness with the help of 7 steps. And we, when we are saying observation, it means we are directly observing it. We are not rationally thinking it. So this difference is very important for all of us. That we are observing. Observing means we are directly observing the units, conscious units, material unit, for example, body. We are not rationally thinking about it. So in exercise one, with the help of seven steps, we tried to directly observe the consciousness. So seven steps are designed to help you to see your consciousness in direct manner, not rationally. Similarly, this exercise two is also have seven steps which will help you to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body. So observation means I am seeing the things as it is, what is happening. So it is very important for all of us that we are observing it directly. So we are observing our consciousness directly. We are observing our body directly. And we are observing the interaction between the self and the body directly. This direct observation is the important point to note. So let me brief this step one and two of exercise two, then we will share our observation. So in this exercise two, in step one, Yes. Okay. So let me start from fresh, then it is good. So in this exercise two, we are trying to observe the body and the interaction between the self and the body. And when we say, in fact, when I am saying observation, it means I am directly observing this interaction. I am directly observing myself. I am directly observing the body. So this direct observation is very important to ensure while observing self and body and the interaction between the self and the body. So in this UHP 1 or UHP 2, we all have gone through this proposal of human being where we study human being as a coexistence of self and body. So all of us have got this proposal during the HP2 workshop. So just briefing you for you. So we studied that self-consciousness is a reality. Body, material is also a reality. And both coexist together. In fact, both exist, then we say this is human being. If self exists, body does not exist, then we will not say human being. Body exists and self is not there, then we will also not say human being. When we say human beings, 
it means self and body are together. So this coexistence of self and body that we call as a human being and this proposal we have got during VHP2 workshops. And rationally, we got this proposal that if we see in terms of need, the need of this self is different from the need of the body. The activities of the self is dif are different from the activities of the body. And in time frame, need and activities of the self is continuous and need and activities of the body is temporary. And then we studied that the need of the self can be fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. And need of the body can be fulfilled by physical chemical flow. In fact, in time, self is continuous and body is temporary. Then we also saw that in the terms of response, self, in the self, there is a knowing, assuming with recognition and fulfilling. So, recognizing and fulfilling can be based on the assumption of the consciousness or can be based on the knowing. But in the body, fulfillment is based on the recognition. So, that's why there is a scope of potential for knowing in the self. That's why we are studying this exercise one and two because we have a potential of knowing. And in short, self is a conscious unit and body is a material unit. But both coexist together. But gradually, we are developing our competence to see this consciousness directly, then this body directly, and interaction between the self and body directly. So gradually, we are developing our competence to see these reality directly and the interaction between these realities directly. So with this background, we will start step one and step, uh, step one of exercise two. So I think these proposals are clear to all of us. If yes, then we can write why in the chat box. If the proposal of this human being is not clear, then we can write N, no, in the chat box. Okay. Okay. So all of us have clarity of this proposal that human being is a coexistence of self and body. Okay. So let's move towards step one. So in UHV2, we have got this proposal and we think of this proposal by the way of logic. But in this step one, we will directly observe these two reality and interaction between these two realities. So to observe it in step one, we are starting step one. Observing the self and the body by the self. So in step one, we can say, I exist, the body exists. I exist, how can I say that I exist? Because I can observe my activities directly. So for example, desire, thought, expectations are going on in me. And we can see it directly. On the basis of this direct observation, we can see that I exist. Self is a reality. I am a reality. And it exists. Similarly, when I directly observe the body, I can see there are many activities going on in the body. And on the basis of observing or reading sensation of these activities from the body, we can say, the body also exists. Body is a reality. So in step one, we have to observe these two realities. And we will see how we can identify that I exist and the body also exists. 
this we have to probe this we have to observe <coughs> So this is step one, where we are trying to observe myself directly. We are trying to body directly. In HV2, we got the proposal in terms of need and activities. And this proposal helped us rationally that the self exists and body exists. But in this step one, we are trying to observe both the realities directly. So this is an important step that and we have enough potential to see both the realities directly. So on the basis of that potential, we can see myself, we can see this body also. And then we can say that the self also exists because some of the activities, some of activities are going on myself. And body also exists because few activities are going on body also. So let's take two minute break and just observe yourself and note, note down that what is happening in you, what is happening in your body. How do you think that body exists? How do you think that this consciousness exists? Can you observe it directly? So let's take two minute break. And after this two minute break, we will share our observation. How are you able to see this self? How are you able to see this body? Then we will share our observations. So let's take two minute break. And after two minutes, we will share our self. Share how do you see that you exist? And how do you see that the body exists? Are you able to see both the realities directly or are you concluding on the basis of some proposals? Are you thinking it rationally on the basis of some proposal or have or you have observed it directly? So direct observation is very important to see both the realities. So if anyone of us have observed, if any of one of us has observed the self, the body, both the realities, not on the basis of thinking, on the basis of direct observation, then we can share. Hello. Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Bhia. Yeah. Namaste to all. Uh, right now, Bhia, I just want to share a very short observation. Uh, I am having a sensation in my stomach. So when I was sitting, I could feel the sensation in my stomach. It sometimes happens when my BP is low. And I could observe that something is happening in my body. And then, so this is what I observed about my body. And then the self, I could observe that uh, many times this happens to me. So now the self is, you know, there are thoughts now. I don't know whether I am observing the self or not. But now when I observe this sensation in my stomach, then my self is like, okay, it happens many times. So I will take some more salt today and it will be okay. And if it is not okay, then I can check it in the evening and observe it for two days. So th this is the small observation, Bia. Your comments on this would be required, Bia. <laughs> Right, Didi. Yeah. So there are activities, many activities taking place in our body. Yeah. And we pay attention, few of them. And whenever we pay attention on few activities, we can say that this is a physical chemical activity. And body is also a physical chemical unit. So we can say that body exists. Because yes. there are some physical chemical activities are going on. Similarly, when I read this sensation, when I read these activities, then I start thinking about it. And this, this thinking activities, 
and activities of thinking is going on in me. And we can say that I also exist. Deep, so this deep, is yeah. a direct observation of the body, okay. material unit, of the self-conscious unit. Okay. okay. So, if so we, we can say this is direct observation. Right. So this is okay. a direct observation. So this is not a conclusion on the basis of some proposal. We are seeing it directly. Ji, ji, bhiya. Ji, thank so you, Bia. Ji, ji, thank you, Bia. So, this direct observation is very important for all of us. You know, from exercise one to exercise two to exercise three. The more we practice to observe the realities directly, the more there will be possibility to get transformation in ourselves. So this direct observation is very important. So in UHV2, we have got many things in terms of proposals. And somehow we convinced ourselves with the help of these proposals. But with direct observation, we will get some qualitative transformation in our consciousness. So that's why we are doing this exercise two. And when we are doing exercise two, exercise one is on the its base. So in this step one of exercise two, we are trying to see that self is there or not. So this is a exercise which we have to do all the time. So I just read these ex uh, points. Are you able to see that you are there? How did you come to this conclusion? Are you able to see that the body is also there? How did you come to this conclusion that body is there? By seeing the body with the eyes or some other way? Number three, can you see that you exist and the body also exists? Can you see this even when your eyes are closed? Try and observe this throughout the day to day. Are you able to observe that you and the body are two distinct realities? So these steps we have to do all the days. 24 cross 7. And we have to note that moments that at this moment I have noted that this activity is going on in my body. That's why I can say that body exists. We have also note we have also to note that some activities are going on in myself. That's why I can say I exist. So body exists, I exist. We have to recognize it with direct observation. So that's why we are doing this step one of exercise two. So let's take one more observation. Namaste, Didi. Yes, Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, everyone. So, Bhaiya, when uh, I'm uh, observing myself, um, be myself, myself and the body, so I want to say that uh, when this uh, UHV is going on, say, for 15 to 20 minutes, I also do my breathing exercise. So, when I am uh, listening, I am listening to you all and also I am doing my own exercise. So, when I'm listening, each and every word that you all tell, I want, I want, I do my imagination, I think. Therefore, uh, I feel myself that I am thinking this. And at the same time, when I am doing my exercise, I can feel that I am taking, um, I'm breathing in and breathing out. So my body also is some, how some uh, vibration is taking place. So I'm, I'm feeling my body. So I want to ask you, Vaya, is, is my way of uh, observing the self and the boy, body is going in a proper way? Yeah, Didi. So when you do some activity with the help of the body or you ask your body to do some activities, then we can mm -hmm. observe the activities very easily. Like you are doing yoga exercise mm -hmm. so it is very easy to observe that activities are going on in our body mm -hmm. so what i am saying is when you are sitting in a place 
quietly mm. then also there are many activities going on in our body mm. in a natural state mm. like breathing digestion blood flow these are sub uh, these are few surface level activities mm. but when you observe your body quietly with calmness mm. then you will be able to see there are many subtle activities are going on in your body mm. and in the whole body from top to toe mm. from top of the head to toe mm -hmm. so many activities are going on in our body so at that time are we able to see that these activities are going on in my body and we can say because i am able to see these activities that's why i am saying that the body exists mm. similarly at the level of self when you are excited when you are uncomfortable mm. you can catch many thoughts and at that moment it is easy to observe that i exist because many activities of the or many excited thoughts are going on <clears throat> but when you are peaceful you know sitting in a place are you able to observe the consciousness that many activities are going on in this consciousness too so when we are sitting peacefully we can also observe that many activities are going on in my body and many activities are going on in the consciousness and that time also i can say that body exist and self also exist mm -hmm. so try this next time when you are sitting peacefully yes okay bhaiya thank you okay bhai. so it is very important to observe the activities of the body the activities of the self all the time so that i can say authentically that i have observed these materialistic activities physical chemical activities then i can say authentically that body exists similarly observe this activity of consciousness when you are peaceful calm then you can also say that on the basis of direct observation of these activities i exist consciousness exists so first step is very simple where we are trying to see whether i exist or not body exist or not so when i see my body through my eyes we can see its color height so many things but even if my eyes are closed i am not seeing my body through my eyes even then i can sense many activities in my body so when you are sitting peacefully you know, then also you can see your body with closed eyes that many activities are going on in my body so important point is that we can observe my body directly through consciousness so when i see my body through the self it means there are many activities are going on in my body and i just reading those activities and based on those reading of activities i can say that yes my body exists and i exist because desire thought expectations are going on in the self so i can also see myself directly with the help of this consciousness and i can also see my body with consciousness directly so how we will see my body because there are many activities going on in my body and whenever i take decision to these these activities i did these activities and i can easily recognize that these are physical chemical activities on the basis of these physical chemical activities we can say that 
one reality is there which consists of physical chemical activities and we are seeing it as body similarly many activities are going on which are not physical chemical activities so like desire thought expectations these are not physical chemical activities so on the basis of this we can say that i am consciousness because the activities going on in me is not physical chemical activities so important point is are we able to see that some physical chemical activities are going on and some conscious activities are going on and this conscious activity is going on in my consciousness and this physical chemical activity is going on in my body and there is a exchange of information between the self and the body that we will see in step 2 that we will still see in step 2 interaction between the self and the body but at this time we are just observing are we able to see that some physical chemical activities are going on some conscious activities are going on and both are different activities so physical chemical activities going on in my body and conscious activities are going on in my consciousness in myself and both are independently running so are we able to observe this so if we see both type of activities then we can say yes consciousness exist body exist so tell me if any other observation by anyone of this step 2 step 1 भैया प्रणाम प्रणाम दीदी नमस्ते जी भैया स्लीपिंग इज इज एन एक्टिविटी ऑफ द बॉडी बट स्लीपीनेस इज आल्सो एन एक्टिविटी ऑफ द बॉडी और ऑफ द कॉन्शियसनेस स्लीपीनेस स्लीपीनेस यस ओके so see when you when we say sleep what does it mean even your body is sleeping many activities are happening in your body ji bhi body is at rest but many activities are going on at that time also ji bhi so if you are saying sleep a body sleeping means body is at rest then it is okay so body is at rest and it is at rest with my decision so Jee i have yes. taken decision that i should rest the body so body is on rest this is one part then sleepiness means if you tell me one example what do you exactly mean by sleepiness then i will be able to Uh, like bhaiya uh, uh, when we uh, sleep exactly the body needs rest so we uh, give a message to the body that now my body needs rest so i should lay down in the bed and close my eyes and take a sleep but mm-hmm. there are times when the body still needs rest but you have other things like so for example i have to attend the uhv morning session at 5:30 but my rest is not complete and i give my give my body a message that i have to wake up yet i feel sleepy and okay. sometimes with a conscious decision i am able to get up from the bed and join the meeting but there are many number of times when i am not able to do this and uh, mm-hmm. sometimes i feel i am awake but not a single word has gone into my ears because i was sleepy at that time oh this is this is now, this is my yeah yes now it is clear to me yes okay so let me respond so if you see bo- both the realities consciousness and the material you know body mm-hmm. so this consciousness the self is active all the time Mm. either day or night mm. 
it is active all the time and At every second every second every microsecond every moment it mm. is active it mm. doesn't matter whether your body is at rest or not sleeping or not but your activities are continuously going on mm. that's why we are saying this consciousness is continuous self mm. is continuous mm. this is one part and if you say the material uh, body so body has certain limits because is is made up of physico chemical activities mm. it has certain limits beyond this limit it may not work that's why there is a requirement to put the body on the rest mm. so when we allow our body to sleep it means we are uh, giving it rest because it is a material mm. with this rest the body self organizes itself itself and with this self organization it components it starts working again and again so this mm. is the mechanism of body that's mm. why we have to keep our body rest time to time mm. right Gee. now the self is active even body is tired mm. now for example i am speaking and my words are going uh, going to your ear when mm. your body at rest mm. if body is tired it has crossed its limits then you ask your body to get up to listen but because of limitation of the body it doesn't get up so mm. it is a limitation of the body this is one part Mm. that's why the lifestyle you know and what work we take from the body is important mm. second part is body is okay for example body is okay body has taken enough rest and my words are going on going into your ear and self has not find priority that this content is important for me up to that limit or not mm. so this content is not at the priority then we can also come in the in, under the influence of the body sens sensual relaxations mm. then we feel sleepy sleepy means one point is body is tired that's why my body mm. is not following my my instructions this is one part mm. Mm. second part whatever is going on is not at my priority mm. so i am under the effect of this sensations that's why i want to i i ask my body to take more rest rest suppose mm. for example suppose you are going to get 1 crore rupees tomorrow morning at 3 am mm. and this 1 crore rupees is at your priority mm. you will immediately get up Mm -hmm. so whenever there is something which is on my priority then you ask your body no get up mm -hmm. so these both component we have to observe what is the matter third third mm -hmm. point could be that i assume i have assumed myself as a body i am not aware of my consciousness so i generally live under the effect of this sensual pleasures so if mm. body is not comfortable i take decision okay let's sleep we will get up after 20 minutes 15 minutes but if i am aware that i am self body is material then decisions can be taken more precisely mm. so these can be the possibilities to do So you have to observe in yourself what is your state it is a mm -hmm. issue of self or the issue of body or the issue of priority i feel bhai it is the issue of body priority at moment uh, priority uhv is a very very big priority for me so i think it the body is that tired that i Uh, sometimes when i am not able to get up it is because the body is too tired to get up it's like that maybe keep your body i observe more yes 
ഭയങ്കര the problem is either some contradiction is going on in me in consciousness i am not able to resolve it that's why i am not allowing my body to sleep this could be one part mm -hmm. so if i am not aware about my consciousness so unconsciously i pass on many instructions to the body and i involve my brain so when i involve my brain it means i am not allowing my body to take rest that's why i want to sleep means my body i want to sleep but my body is not sleeping because i am somehow indulging my body with my thoughts so if i am aware that my thoughts can be aligned can be in harmony with my right understanding in that case i will not indulge my body i will resolve my thoughts in myself with the help of right understanding and i will let my body sleep so the problem is i indulge with the body unconsciously i pass on many information many instruction to the body and body is consistently consistently involved with me that's why body is not able to take rest so next time you just lay down and ask yourself body is material i am consciousness whatever is going on in me i can resolve it on the basis of my right understanding let the body sleep so body will sleep and you mm. resolve your issues mm. but if you will indulge with your body you will pass on many instruction to the body then body cannot sleep because you are involving it so next time be more aware about your decisions you know next time be more aware that i am consciousness body is material let the body sleep what is ever is going on is going on in my consciousness and i can resolve it with the help of my understanding mm -hmm. so in this manner the body will sleep you will also be in harmony as a human being ji bhaiya ji ji bhaiya will try ji pranam bhaiya pranam ji okay so we can take one more sharing on this step number 1 so step number 1 is before uh, taking sharing i just revise it so step number 1 is very simple but it is very important to observe it directly so i am observing myself i am observing body and on the basis of this observation i can see that many activities are going on in my body and these activities are physical chemical activities and these physical chemical activities are reality so body is a reality so we can say that body exists similarly activities are going on in me that are not physical chemical activities that are conscious activities so few conscious activities are going on few physical chemical activities are going on we have to observe it directly if we mix both these activity then it will happen what didi was sharing just few minutes back so with this you know we can share up our observation so yeah namaste so bhai i am able to see the two realities uh, and observe but what i am able to also see is once when i able to read some sensation from the body after that there is lot of uh, 
imagination getting into my thought. There are different thoughts about what I had uh, read from the body. And now that is continuous. That is, uh, that is already, I had only read it once, but now the effect is there in that self that is continuously happening in me. That is what I am able to see. But uh, is that uh, so much dominating? That's what I am trying to understand by right now. The initial parts. Yeah. You can just help me in this regard. Yeah, yeah. So we will see uh, this issue in coming steps. But briefly, I will address it here. Yeah, okay. Okay. So there are many activities are going on in our body. And if we see this consciousness, if we, we are unaware of our consciousness, our activities, then unknowingly, unconsciously, we associate many conclusions, many thoughts with these activities of the bodies. Once we associate our thoughts with the activities of the body, so whenever activities happen in our body, and correspondingly, many thoughts start in our consciousness. Then it becomes difficult, it becomes difficult to handle this. That's why we are moving one by one. So first step is to just observe what is happening in our body, what is happening in our consciousness. And we are trying to see that both are separate realities. Somehow, we associate ourselves with the bodily so closely that we assume that we are the body. Rationally, we say that I am consciousness. But somehow, we have assumed unknowingly that we are the body. That's why activities of body are impacting the activities of consciousness. And Similarly, activities of self are impacting the activities of body without my awareness. This is the issue. So that's why we are trying to move step by step. That's why in this step one, we are trying to see, have we observed that these there are two realities. One is consciousness and one is material body. Once we start observing that these are two realities, then we will be able to see that physical chemical activities are going on in my body and this conscious activities are going on in myself. Then in next step, we will see how to disassociate all those assumptions, all those decisions which we have taken because we have assumed that we are body. So what issue you are trying to uh, ask for me is the issue of association. Somehow yeah. we have associated many activities of consciousness with the activities of the body. So we will move step by step. Then we will deassociate this uh, activities of self, assumption in the activities of self for the body. So we will do via in step by step. Okay. Okay. At this point, important is, am I so, able to see yeah. chemical activities, conscious activities separately? This is important. I'm able to see, but it is helping a lot. Once when we make this segregation separately, and then we say, okay, this is what it is. So that is there, that harmony comes in. Once and I'm able to see this, this is what is able to, I'm able to see here recently. Thank you. Right. So if we see that both realities are different, then we can also see that my decisions are my decisions happening in consciousness. Activities of body are activities of body happening in the body. When I take decision to indulge, indulge with these activities of body, then only I will indulge with the activities of body. If I am not taking decision, then I will not get involved in the activity of this body. That's why this step one is very important to see both the realities differently. And 
when we see these two realities differently, separately, then we will also be able to see that there is a distance between me and the body. They are not intermingled. There is a distance between me and the body. And once we are able to see that there are distance between the self and the body, then we can handle information coming from the body. But if we have not seen that both two are both two uh, are different realities, and if we have not seen that both are at distant distance, then we will you know, involve many activities of consciousness with the activities of body, and we assume or we take some conclusion from the activities of body in the activities of the self. We mix together uh, both the realities. So that's why it is very important in the step one to see that both reality exist separately and there is a distance between me and the body. In this sense, step one is very important. Right. right. It is still still an assumption. Still, I believe we need to observe it. Need, yeah. right, right. Thank you, Bhai. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we can take one more sharing. Namaste, Bhaiya. Yeah, Namaste. Good morning, Bhaiya. Uh, Bhaiya, that's uh, my actually not a sharing. I want clarification mm -hmm. about the experiential validation about the distance between the self and the body, Bhaiya. That's how we can say that there is a distance and how we can experientially validate ourselves. Yeah, so you can experientially validate by direct observation. So you are in the room, a fan in the room, you know? a yeah. fan is also in the room. Both are separate reality or not? Yeah, that is a physical Both are different realities. Yeah, yeah, that is a material unit and uh, definitely there is a distance. Right. <clears throat> Similarly, you are conscious unit and body is a material unit. Just observe it. Both are at distance or not. Distance means? See, there is a distance. That's why you have choice to read sensation from the body or not. That's why you are with choices. Because there is a distance. Otherwise, we will become helpless. Whatever is going on in body, immediately reflect in ourselves, our consciousness, if we are the same reality. So, both realities are different. That's why we are with choices, whether to read this sensation or not read this sensation. So, just observe it and make your observation more sharp that you can see or not you are consciousness body is material conscious activities is going on in your self physical chemical activities are going on in your body are both activities happening separately or together so just observe it then you can share it more authentically experientially. So experiential validation means I am observing it. And with this observation, now I am confirming myself. Yes, I am seeing this consciousness as consciousness. I am seeing this body as a body. And now I have with choices, I can read this sensation of the body or I can drop reading this sensation of the body. Because we are with choices, that's why there is a distance. But this is a rational way. I am clarifying you. You have to observe it directly by yourself. Yes. Right yes. Here? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, and one more question, by in short. Yes. I am the person who was deciding my happiness or unhappiness. Okay. That is, yes. many things are happening within the body like digestion and all activities are going on. And outside also, there are some activities which are taking place. Anyway, self has no connectivity or control over the activities which are happening outside. 
So the, my question in this context is, is there anything, something what we call a superpower or something else, which is responsible to happen those activities? That is interrelatedness between the cell, body, and is there anything, something like the power, what we say and what we call the yeah. See, what, uh, what I can say here is if you observe your consciousness, you know, if you observe your potential, with your potential, you can see the whole existence is reflecting on you. But due to my sanskars, due to my exemptions, I am not able to see this existence in me. And you are enough capable to continue your happiness by yourself, by way of understanding, by way of right feeling. And you are also able to ensure harmony in your body, which is already in harmony. You have to just ensure while giving some input to your body. So you have enough ability to ensure harmony in your body. Similarly, you have enough ability, enough potential to ensure your participation in larger order. So you have already enough potential to keep yourself happy in continuity, to ensure harmony in your body, to participate in larger order. Once you unfold this potential, then I think there is no need to understand this superpowers. But if you are not able to keep yourself happy, then of course these questions may come in our mind because we are trying to get happiness from outside. And otherwise we have enough potential. And, and if this happens that I ensure my happiness in continuity, I ensure harmony with my body, I ensure my participation in larger order, then what is the need of this superpower? Just yeah, ask but, yourself. Yeah, I think yeah, that's when you go for uh, any of religious uh, things, what we are concentrating. So there is something they are uh, putting it outside. There is something which is uh, responsible for everything, whatever is happening. Yeah. So whatever is happening in me is because of my assumptions or because of my knowing. What is happening outside is happening under certain laws, laws of nature. Okay. In fact, inside consciousness also, things are happening under conscious laws. So if I am in contradiction, I will be unhappy. This is innate law. If yes. I see coexistence, then I will be happy. This is innate law. So whatever is happening is happening according to laws. But if I don't know that laws working in this nature, then I may get impression that some superpower is working. But the clarity of these innate laws, we can see the whole nature, consciousness, body is working under certain laws. And these laws can be understood by unfolding my potential, by exploring myself. So better we observe ourselves, we unfold our potential and with this potential we can see the whole existence is running under certain laws. If we have not unfolded it, then we may get impression that some superpower exists and working. Maybe it, it may be working, but it is working under certain laws. So by unfolding our potential, we can understand that power also. We can understand our power also. And we are enough in ourselves to make my happy in happiness in continuity. So this can be done if I unfold myself. Right, dear? Yes, very clear. We are very clear. And we can understand those laws. We can observe those laws. Yeah, you can observe your laws. Every one of us can observe these laws. The issue is whether we are contemplating or not. 
So to start contemplation, we are doing all these activities. So once this contemplation starts in ourselves, then we will start understanding these laws that are very simple, natural, clear, and, and these can be understood. And with the understanding of these laws, we can ensure right feeling, right thought in ourselves, aligning with the harmony with whole existence. And we can live peacefully. We are already this ability. Right, Bhaiya? Yeah, very clear, Bhaiya. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bhaiya. Okay, so it's time for Hindi session now. So, Bhaiya, you can conclude. But we will uh, do this homework all the day. We will see that the self is there or not. If self exists, how do we conclude that self exists? Similarly, we will see where uh, the, this body is exist or not. If it exists, how do we conclude that it exists? Similarly, we can see that we exist and the body also exists. Can you see this even when your eyes are closed, when you are peaceful, when you are lying down? Every moment, every second, the whole day, we have to observe these physicochemical activities, these conscious activities, and we have to see whether this body exists, self exists, both are two realities that exist separately. The more we observe it, the more we get clarity about these realities. And with this clarity, the more the more clear decision we can take for ourselves, for body, and for our surrounding. So with this, we can stop here. So, Thank you so much for helping us in the journey of self-exploration. Thank you for all the co-explorers for being the part of this English part of the conversation. Putting your reflections, questions, definitely helps all of us.